This video is brought to you in collaboration with wowhead.com. Hello everyone. The elements, for some reason, they're on the rise. And in turn, we saw the Dragon Isles and the Dragfear Awaken. Primalistic forces, led by Kura Grim Totem, then marched towards the Froststone Vault, and they've released Razagev, the Storm Eater. They are coming to cleanse the world of the Titan's stain. Alexstrasza, who is she? What is she? She is Razagev, youngest of the primal incarnates. Incarnates? Four dangerous adherents of the elemental forces. At the dawn of the Aspects, our flights embraced the Titan's gifts. They did not. The war that followed was unimaginable, and it took all of our strength combined to banish them. If they were so dangerous, why were they not destroyed? I hadn't the heart to do it. We were once as clutchmates. Time, it seems, has not quelled their fury. And look at us. Should she free her kin now, we haven't the strength to stop them. And if Iridicrum's hunger is unleashed... Then we have no choice. If we are to be protectors once more, the aspects of our dragonflights must be made anew. Upon the Dragon Isles, there stand the Oath Stones, symbolizing the bond between dragons and titans. Their oaths to the world of Azeroth itself. The dragons haven't been to the Isles for over 10,000 years. And in that time, quite a lot has happened. Some of the aspects have been slain, some have been replaced, and all have lost a huge portion of their power. It's the Dragon Queen's hope that by re-empowering the Oath Stones, reigniting the purpose of their flights and their sacred charge, that they might get their full aspect powers back. Considering that the last war against the Incarnates took all of their powers combined, and then some, we surely need the dragons to go back to their former glory. With the Oath Stones of each flight renewed, I believe we can channel the essence of each into the Mother Oath Stone and restore our aspectral powers. This sacred artifact and symbol of the unity of Dragonkind lies within Tearhold. Koronos, what can you tell us of it? It has been many centuries since we last walked the halls of Tyr's stronghold. When the Isles awakened, so too did the Guardians of Tyrhold. While some have resumed their duties, others have taken to acting erratically. Should you go there, I cannot guarantee the greeting you will receive. I understand. However, I have faith that with the help of our champion, we can overcome any danger. Our queen hopes that through the Mother Oath Stone, an ancient gift bestowed upon the flights by the Titans, that they'll be able to reactivate it and in doing so, restore their aspect powers. It's a long shot. Let's hope this works. I owe you my thanks. You have helped the Dragonflights remember our calling. With the Oath Stones renewed, we can finally reclaim our Aspectral power. This has to work. Nothing? But the Oath Stones were renewed. How is this possible? <laughs> it seems your Titans have abandoned you. Razagath! What have you done? You proved yourself unworthy. All on your own. Queen of the Dragons. Now, it is our time. The Age of the Incarnates has come. She's going to release them. No! A 
long shot, but still disappointing that it didn't work out. Razagev is quite pleased to see the false queen be rejected. And it's anyone's guess why this didn't work. Now I don't think that the Storm Eater herself broke anything. And it kinda looks like there's this ancient titanic device that's working in unison across the isles. But at this point, it's still broken. The island has been left on its own for a few millennia. The keepers have been slumbering, time eroding things away. That's, and we still have some conflicts to deal with amongst the flights. There's Caleb restoring the family, Sabellian or Raphael picking up leadership for the Black Dragon Flight, Marifra and the Green Dragon Flight with her mother Ysera, Nosdormu and the Infinite Dragon Moruzans, and then the burden of leadership for Alex Traza to bring it all together. We might have renewed the Oath Stones, but there's still plenty of healing to be done amongst the different Dragon Flights. That's going to take some time though, which we do not have right now. Razagev has found and broken into the Vault of the Incarnates. Within, she's working on a foul ritual to unleash her siblings, so together they can purge the world of the Titan's influence. We must assault this impregnable fortress, break the defenses to end this threat. While many could fall, defeat condemns all the realms to the Incarnate's reign of fire and blood. The Curator have answered the Dragon Queen's call, Kalagos. But I wish the other aspects were here with us. Alexstrasza is still recovering from her last encounter with Razageth. Nazdormu feels the weight of destiny pressing down upon him. It falls to us to take back this prison from the Primalists, and ensure the other incarnates are not freed. Then we shall not fail, my friend. Who knows? This battle may inspire a tale that you can share with your own clutch one day. Primalists have used their elemental magic to breach the outer Titan seal! Kalagos, do you know where the other incarnates are imprisoned? Within the core of the mountain, Neltharion himself shaped the earth around the boat to protect it. We must break their lines and stop Razageth before she can free them. It's so very nice to have Katkar back with us, now supporting the magical Caligos and rooting for his future. What else can you talk about when facing total annihilation? Now we're not alone in this battle for the fate of Azeroth. On the backs of some of the finest drakes that the Dragonflies have to offer, we bombard the primalistic forces down below. Like in Grimbatol, this gives us a chance to clear up a path of our choosing, take out some enemies that we don't want to face head on. Now just a heads up, as I usually do during these raid videos, I am going to talk a little bit about the abilities during the fights. This gives me a bit more time to show off the encounters and let you know what's going on. We are of course focusing on the story and this isn't a guide video per se, but the raid looks very cool and I want to show off as much as we can. The skies are mine to control! Aranog, finish them! The ritual must not be interrupted! Looks like we go the rest of the way on foot. By Fang or by Talon, Razageth must be stopped! The sky belongs to the storm, but no matter. We've been able to do enough damage to clear the rest of the way ourselves. Was this the best you could muster, Calicos? A band of mewling soft scales following a whelp? I'll grind your skulls under my heel. Commander Aranog switched sides during our adventures in Taldrasses. Although, considering that his mother is Broodkeeper de Yurna, I guess that he was never really on our side. The Draconic on the Dragon Isles, they were once upon a time the primordial Terrasec. The aspects transformed them, similar to how they were transformed by the Titans from proto-dragons into dragons. They took the Terrasec and transformed them into the Draconic, to which some worshipped the ground that they walk on, but others, especially after being abandoned for 10,000 years, they don't see the dragons as their rightful owners anymore. What right do they have to suddenly show up and claim the dragon house as their own? Aranog took it one step further, used the Firestone to evolve himself into Primalist Aranog. Now he's fighting fully on the side of the Incarnates. Now from marked players, pools of fire will fill up the floor, with Terrasec jumping out of the pools to answer their commander's call. They'll focus completely on the marks until they're taken out, while a massive ring of fire will slowly close in around us. We have to punch an opening through it to not be pushed into the middle and die a horrible, fiery death. Brute mother, I've failed you. Galagos, think we can take to the skies? Doubtful. Harasageth was not boasting. 
The sky is her domain. We must cut the Primalists off from their power before we engage the Storm Eater. I expect they won't make it easy for us. Champions, when you're ready. There are different tunnels and pathways to choose from, but all are filled with elements, Primalists and Proto-Dragons that try to block our way. Master, Erenog has fallen. The invaders are headed towards us. Let them come. My creations will rend their flesh from bone. Kurog is charging himself up with the might of the elements, but we get to play with some of his summoned creations. If we hurry, we might be able to stop them before the next ritual is complete. The invaders are here! Work quickly! Cards! The elemental is almost to a plane! Be free! They tried to pull Teros, an unyielding force of destruction, out of his elemental plane. But we disturbed the ritual, and now the poor element of Earth is stuck between two worlds at the quarry of infusion. Good thing too, considering how much pain he can bring even when stuck. The Earth itself rises up against us, awakening little pillars which pulse with nature damage. If you line them up nicely, the tank can then aim Teros' slam, just so that he'll get rid of them himself. Do be careful to avoid the fallen debris, and after gaining enough energy, Teros will then fill up one third of the room, where the earth itself now pulses underneath your feet. Make sure to stand out of that, and break the elemental before there's no more room left to stand. I am broken. If Karak can manifest creatures this powerful, we should proceed with caution. We'll need to destroy any that remain before we confront him. Just as long as none of them are spiders. Oh, don't worry, Caligos. What are the odds of finding a massive, hungry, creepy, crawly frost spider all the way down here in Ice Skitter Hollow? <sighs> this cold chills me to the bone. <laughs> Hold. We are not alone. Something stalks us. What do you sense? Looks like Kirag has himself an ice spider, and it laid eggs. Sent after cold breath is Kurog's most vicious creation, a massive arachnid infused with the unforgiving cold. Her singular purpose is to guard her brood of thousands, away to the day that they'll hatch and enshroud Azeroth in a web of winter. It's a big spider boss that would not look out of place within Elden Ring. She'll create slippery patches of ice underneath her feet, which makes movement rather fun. Just moving around, it's become bad enough, but don't worry, she is kind enough to shoot out some webbing, which will give you some ground to stand on. Touch the webbing long enough, and you'll get cocooned, so it's for emergency uses only. Like when she tries to drag you into the middle with her gossamer burst. Add some big ads that need to be taken care of, some smaller ads that explode, clear the webs on the ground. Then she slowly but surely climbs her way up, and you best make sure to keep up with her until you reach the top and she'll start to push you back. Make sure to not be pushed off the platform. <sighs> Good riddance. I, I wish Alex Straza were here. This whole den should be cleansed with fire. Another time, my friend. The Grand Summoner awaits. Be on your guard. I do not trust these dragon worshippers. Even the Jardin have decided to show up, not trusting anything related to the dragons of course, but always up for a challenging fight. At the Elemental Conclave, we find the Primal Council. Fire is a hungry child. It must always be fed. It will consume your corpses for days. Frost does not care who falls into its icy embrace. Your faces will be frozen in horror forever. The earth opens! Blood feeds the earth! Lightning's caress is capricious. One kiss marks you forever. These masters of the elements are ruthless in their pursuit of power. Embar Firepath is as merciless as the fire she commands. Opal Fang wields the might of the earth to crush her enemies. 
Kadros Eisroth is cold and cruel, while his sibling Duffia Stormlash is as wild and unpredictable as a raging storm. Storm, earth, and fire. Heed my call. The four of them work in unison, and all need to die around the same time, although cast their convocation spell and wipe us all out. Thankfully, we can use their different elemental abilities against each other. So, where a opal fang will cause the earth to erupt, the pillar left behind, it makes for the perfect conduit to drop off our lightning debuff, which is caused by Duffia. It is highly contagious, so we gotta make sure to not share our conductive mark around. Not a fire, it does so much damage that it needs to be shared on impact, but its destructive force, it can be used to get rid of some of those pillars, and they do leave a pool behind. The perfect temperature to get rid of our blizzard debuff, or else will be entombed. Kadros, no! You, you will know my wrath! Apparently, Kadros and Duffia were really, really close as she manages to escape the fight, fly off to the primal bulwark, where she asked Razagev for the power to claim her vengeance. They killed my brother. My vengeance requires your power. Quiet, whimpering fool. If I didn't have need of you, you would already be dead. I will grant you a modicum of my strength. It should suffice to deal with these meddlers. Uh, it's... Uh, it's too much. Indeed. This gift will destroy you. Kill them before it dies! Say hello to Duffia Sendit. Imbued with a fraction of the incarnate strength, Duffia gains control of the wind itself, unleashes his ferocity to tear her enemies apart. The power of the storm races across the battlefield, occasionally change the direction at Duffian's will. She also brought her contagious lightning back, so we'll have to stay spread out, even when she tries to pull all of us in into her cyclone. Once she's gathered enough energy, adds are summoned in, and once again, they, they use movement in a pretty cool way. The adds do a massive knockback upon their death, which on higher difficulties, you'll have to use to get to the other platforms. On normal, you just need to make sure not to kill them at the same time. Unless you can fly, of course. Uh, the storm never breaks. Back to the beginning, where the path to Kurog is finally open. The master of all elements has been charging himself up, getting ready to summon in his powerful entities, a storm, fire, ice, and earth. You dispatched a few of my playthings, nothing more. Now comes your doom. The once prized pupil of Magatha Grimtotem has found the perfect place within the Falls of Incarnates, which is the Primal Convergence, where each section of the room it connects to one of his four elements. That's why I don't want him to be anywhere near the middle, because that's where you can draw them all together and then make him overwhelmingly powerful. It's best to take him to one element at a time, which is a different costume for each. Over at the altar of earth, he'll make the earth rise up, underneath him at first, and then it spreads out further through the room. At the altar of frost, there will be a big chunk of ice that he throws at you, which you want to catch together to share the damage. At the altar of flame, the old saying still applies, you don't want to stand in a fire. And the last altar, the altar of storm, there's a shocking burst that you want to drop outside of the raid, and then thunder strike, which you want to soak, otherwise you're going to be taking a whole lot of damage. At 100 energy, he'll then jump into the middle and give you some adds to play with, depending on what altars he's been hanging out. With the adds gone, Kurok returns to the fight, and not even a master summoner will be stopping us today. I am the master. Kurok and his creations will not threaten us again. We cannot afford to relent, not until we stop Razageth. You are here, which means Erenog is dead. To you, he was just an obstacle to be cleared. To me, he was a son. of Azeroth does not matter now. Only vengeance for my son! 
Broodkeeper Diurna is the fierce guardian of the Primalist Clutchworn, and a last obstacle before Razagev herself. We see many eggs around the room, but this time we're not gonna mind control the Broodkeeper while massive waves of ads spawn into the room. This time we're going to guide her lightning attacks over as many eggs as we can to destroy them, while dealing with massive waves of ads that spawn into the room. Ads that need to be kept away from the Broodkeeper, or else they'll be healed and do a lot more damage. Once all the eggs are gone, the Broodkeeper goes wild. She tries to root us to the ground. She throws fire into our face, have lightning strike us down. She might have righteous vengeance on our side for the death of her son. That still won't stop us from breaking through to Razagev. Uh, Aranog, I will be with you soon. The drakes are fleeing! Without Diurna to control them, they have lost the will to fight. Champions, now is the time to strike! Unworthy mortals, with my kin are unleashed. We will reclaim this world for true dragon kind. The false reign of the aspects will be ended. The vault looks absolutely gorgeous, with Razagev's kin locked up high. We can see the reason why we're here, why we're fighting right in front of us. The Storm Eater cannot be allowed to set them free, to set free what was locked away so long ago. Should she succeed at freeing her fellow incarnates from their ancient prison, Razagev and her kin will topple the aspects, scour the world clean of every trace of the Titan's influence. You think the Titans brought order to this world? No! They shackled it! What they could not control, they imprisoned! Just like the aspects did to us! The morality behind this war, who is wrong and who is right, it will make a nice discussion video for a later day. Let's now focus on trying to stop the might of the storm itself. Thunder Chicken has a mega laser attack, marks players with static charge, which after blowing up, it leaves behind a static field. A great patch to slow us down as she tries to throw us off the platform with her hurricane wings. Again, we are going to make use of the boost, turn her attacks in our favor. We need to split the raid and fly across the platforms to deal with the ads there, while she decides to deep breath across the battlefield. Quite the experience to hear two teams try to navigate simultaneously, but we managed to get it done. With the storm ads down, the platform activates and we can teleport back over. The fight is dragging on though, as with each attack, the vault integrity lowers. We avoid the electrical swirlies, we drop our big circles outside the raid and drop our tiny circles away from other players to then interrupt or stun the orb that spawns to get rid of it. Her Tempest Wing creates a massive wave of electricity that we need to run through to lower the damage. And at 100 energy, Razagev unleashes her Storm Surge. We're marked with either positive or negative debuff, think Thaddeus from Naxxramas, and we need to stand with our fellow marks to have enough damage to push her out of this ever increasingly hurting phase. The vault gives in as another ad is spawned, one that shoots out electricity orbs, teleports across the battlefield to create little ads that cannot reach it. And again, Razagev depressed the platform. You think we're done now that the vault has been broken. You think we've done enough phases in this end boss fight, but you will be wrong. One more to go, baby. I absolutely love the Razagev fight. One more knockback as the clock starts ticking. The field is surrounded with the might of the storm, slowly filling up the middle, removing any safe spots to stand on. Big circles are still dropped outside the raid, sometimes at your own demise. But we avoid her massive laser attack and run through that circle of electricity. The youngest of the primal incarnates is no joke, but we do manage to take her out. This battle has been won, yet the war, the war's only just begun. It is done. We stopped her. No. The damage is too great. They're about to... Sister. What have they done to you? Her death demands... Vengeance! All who betrayed Dragonkind to the Titans will face our world! Kadkar, we can't! 
cannot win this fight. We have to get out of here! My friends, we sensed a great upheaval beneath the earth and feared the worst. We barely survived. Razageth is dead, but... Her kin have been freed. Oh... Nasdormu? What is it? The timeways. They are chaotic, but still obscured. A dark future looms on the horizon. We haven't long to prepare for their onslaught. Razageth's reckless haste cost her life, and they will not make that mistake again. They will regain their strength and choose their next moment carefully. Then we must take the fight to them. Strike before they are recovered. That will be difficult. Eridicron's mastery of the Earth will harbor them and keep them out of our reach. What is it about this Eridicron that vexes you so? Of the three that remain, Viranoth and Farak were ever loyal to the Incarnate's ideals. But it was Eridicron who truly embraced the war. The last captured, and the most difficult to contain. At the end, he struck terrible bargains to keep their cause alive. His violent desperation makes him dangerous. I believe the other incarnates never knew the true depths of his depravity. We must not despair. Their war is coming. And while we may not yet have our spectral powers, we can rebuild our unity. Heal the wounded flights. Embrace our allies. Only together do we stand any chance of victory. <laughs> Together. Together. Our adventure in Dragon Flight, it's only just begun. And time is going to tell where the story will take us next. We can speculate a little bit, we can guess. Alexstrasza mentions how Eridicron, the stone skilled, primal incarnate of Earth, is more depraved than Razageth the Storm Eater, Viranov the Frozen Heart, or Firek the Blazing. A proto-dragon that is connected to Earth. It truly embraced the war and made terrible bargains. <laughs> deal. <laughs> I like deal. Could this be the reason why the Incarnates are so juiced up on primalistic might that they were able to overpower the so-called empowered aspects? And we don't have a Deathwing anymore, but now we do have a proto-Deathwing. Interesting. I wonder if we're gonna make like a, a dragon soul and pull the powers together. And I wonder what the other incarnates might say if they knew more about all of this. If they knew more about Eridicon's depravity. Well, the incarnates and the primalist, they make a good point when it comes to the order imposed by the titans. Times have definitely changed. The world of Azeroth that they once knew, it's long gone, let alone the thing that slumbers within. Would we be able to convince the other two to stand with us rather than against us? Maybe have them try to do so, one of them die and the other make it through. Then there's Nosdormu, of course, with his whole Muruzan future on the horizon. I mentioned at the start, and Kalix says it as well. The Dragonflights, they have plenty of healing left to do. We have plenty of renown left to earn, rewards to claim and soup to make. All of that is going to be in the future, as you're now up to speed on the story that goes down within the Vault of the Incarnates. So a big, big thank you to you for watching, and a huge shout out to the guild Pod Gaming from Stormskill EU, who were kind enough to allow my Alliance Paladin to join their merry band of hordes to grab all these recordings. I wouldn't have been able to do it without them, so thank you ever so much, everybody. Of course, say that you want more details on all the things that we talked about today, then check out the related WoWed article in the description down below. And yeah, like I said, speculation, discussions, all that for the future. For now, thank you everybody, on to next time, see ya!